Thank me, Joe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. God bless you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying thank you. Yeah, but once is no. There we go. I think. No. Damn, you need to be repeating yourself like crazy. Sheesh, I don't care. Yeah, I bet she's a girl right now. It's not stupid. It is Bloomberg Daybreak Asia, but it's Thursday, July 25th in Hong Kong, Wednesday, oh, July 24th in New York. And coming up this hour, former New York Fed President Bill Dudley is calling on the Fed to cut rates sooner than later. IBM reports a jump in AI business bookings as customers work to bring in the latest technology. And shares in Ford plunge in late trading after reporting adjusted EPS below it. Netanyahu asks for more USA, shares his vision of a future with Congress. Biden addresses the nation. Harris fundraising tour. I'm Ed Baxter with Global News. That's all straight ahead on Bloomberg Daybreak Asia. On Bloomberg 1130 New York. Bloomberg 991 Washington, D.C. Bloomberg 1061 Boston. Bloomberg 960 San Francisco. Sirius XM 9 p.m. on Wall Street. We're getting uh, trading underway now in uh, Taiwan and in uh, Singapore. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Asia. Glad you're along for the ride. We're brought to you by IBKR. If you're a financial advisor, why not switch to Interactive Brokers? You'll get the lowest cost of global trading and turnkey custody solutions. No ticket charges for your interest. at all at IBKR.com slash RIA. We check markets for you throughout the day here on Bloomberg. Quite the sell-off going on in Japan with the Nikkei down more than 2.6%, a loss a little greater than 1,000 points. We do have a stronger yen. That's typically a negative, up about 4 tenths of 1% against the greenback at around 153.35. But we have to mention the sell-off that we had in mega-cap tech uh, stateside, particularly in many of those key AI names like NVIDIA, down about the 6.8% today. NASDAQ comp was down about 3.6% for its worst day since October 2022. In Seoul, the Kospi, weaker by 1.8%, and in Sydney, the ASX 200 down about 9 tenths of 1%. U.S. Treasury yields drifting lower. Remember, we've got a Fed meeting next week, and at the end of this week, it's the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, the PCE data, on Friday. Two-year Treasury is off two basis points at the moment at 440. We'll take another look at market action for you in about 15 minutes, right? Now
now it's time for global news. President Joe Biden has addressed the nation for the first time since he decided to withdraw from the race. And Baxter has that story and more from the 960 Newsroom in San Francisco. Ed. Yeah, okay, thank you, Brian. President says he feels his record merited a second term, but for the good of the nation, it was time to pass the torch. He says he will serve his term because there is a lot to do, including... We'll keep rallying the coalition of proud nations to stop Putin from taking over Ukraine and doing more damage. We'll keep NATO stronger and I'll make it more powerful and more united than any time in all of our history. I'll keep doing the same for our allies in the Pacific. You know, when I came to office, the conventional wisdom was that China would inevitably, would inevitably pass, the United, pass the United States. Yeah, he said he feels Kamala Harris will do a great job. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in front of Congress today defending the war in Gaza and asking for more help. Fiery speech, not mentioning an end to the war except in the context of victory. Israel will not relent. Israel will not bend. We will defend our land. We will defend our people. We will fight until we achieve the victory. It became a political football as some Democrats boycotted and others in the room not applauding. And that Yahoo calling protesters outside and on college campuses idiots. Today, as Israel fights on the front line of civilization, I do appeal to America. Give us the tools faster and we'll finish the job faster. And says that if the U.S. does not help soon, it will be helping Iran. He'll have private meetings uh, with President Biden tomorrow and a briefing with Vice President Kamala Harris as well and meetings with Donald Trump Friday in Mar-a-Lago. Now, the Biden administration is continuing to say that peace agreement may be close. Bloomberg's Courtney McBride. The message that we've been hearing repeatedly from the Biden administration is that they're very close to a deal on a temporary turning to a permanent ceasefire and the release of, of their remaining hostages and that there are small but bridgeable gaps that, that need to be addressed. She says that's what the Bloomberg information is reporting as well. And Kamala Harris out today imploring black women to organize and mobilize for her campaign. Our nation needs your leadership once again. In this moment, I believe we face a choice between two different visions for our nation. One focused on the future, the other focused on the past. And she says when they mobilize, they will win. Now, uh, the party is also full steam ahead in fundraising. Bloomberg's Laura Davison says it's been going very well. Uh, but there's still some ground to be made up. Democrats right now are going into this fight with Kamala Harris with less money in the bank than Republicans, and they have little time to kind of organize and get going. They had, uh, you know, sort of the Biden network. That network had largely been tapped. There was a lot of malaise, particularly over the past month. As donors said, look, we're not going to give any more. But... FBI Director Christopher Wray in front of the House Judiciary Committee today says more is being learned about the man who tried to assassinate Donald Trump. Analysis of a laptop that the investigation ties to the shooter uh, reveals that on July 6th he did a Google search for, quote, how far away was Oswald from Kennedy. And also flew a drone over the area at the time leading up to the speech and that he had explosives. Ray says the investigation into the lapses will continue. Global News 24 hours a day and whenever you want it with Bloomberg News Now in San Francisco. I'm Ed Baxter and this is Bloomberg. Back to Hong Kong, right? All right, Ed, thank you very much. The time now is the half minute past the hour. Let's take a look at the top business stories now. Well, former New York Fed President Bill Dudley is now calling on the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates as soon as possible. The story from Bloomberg's Denise Delegree. Dudley says he used to be in the hire for longer camp, but he has changed his mind.
3% in late trading. Anytime shares of Ford Motor Company plunged as much as 12% in late trade, this after the company reported adjusted EPS for the second quarter below estimates. Ford CFO John Waller said, the mix is a proverbial bump in the road for the automaker. We reaffirmed guidance for the year. Our adjusted EV guidance uh, between 10 and 12 billion. We increased our free cash flow guidance by a billion dollars. Now this is one quarter along the journey towards reshaping the company as we transform, as the industry transforms. And it's not going to be a straight line up. But I think the positive here is that we're on track for the year. It's consistent with what we said at the beginning of the year. And our cash flow is coming in better. CFO John Lawler there. The adjusted EPS print came in at 47 cents a share. Compare that with the estimate of 67 cents a share. We go to South Korea next, where the chipmaker SK Hynix reportedly quarterly revenue more than doubled. Sales, 11.9 billion. Compare that against the projection of analysts, 11.7 billion. Operating profit was also above forecast. Now, these numbers support the view that spending on AI hardware will persist in 2024, despite some of the U.S. curbs on supplying Chinese equipment makers. In the long run, SK Hynix is earmarking some $15 billion to meet surging demand for those high-end chips. However, for the moment, the stock is being caught up in some of the tech selling that we're seeing SK Hynix shares down at the moment by around 6.7%. Brian? Joining us now is Dan Hines, Managing Director, Senior Equity Analyst at Wendy Securities. Dan, so apparently AI is now out of favor, especially in that big spending, for instance, by the hyperscalers, uh, has gone from uh, a distinct positive to now a negative. Is that wrong? Yeah. I look, I mean, if you look at numbers from Alphabet, and I think we're going to see from Microsoft, Amazon, and others, the CapEx spending is off the chart. And, and that's bullish for AI revolution and tech. In terms of the sell-off today, we view it as a blip. In other words, it, as, as bad as it feels today, this is not stopping the big tech rally. This continues to be our season that we've seen the last year and a half. You mentioned Alphabet. I mean, was uh, during the call with analysts that Sundar Pichai, the CEO, was telling investors, "Hey, you're going to have to be patient to see concrete results from the investments the company has been making in artificial intelligence." What's the timeline there? What is he really getting at? How long before investors really see the bang for the buck? Look, I think when you have the like Nvidia and Microsoft, you see it more immediately because of where they play, of course, in chips as well as in the cloud. For, for Alphabet and Alphabet on the Google unit, it, we're talking six, nine, twelve months to where it's really going to pay off. But when you look at this story, like Google is essentially right now a transformation story. I mean, they, they have each AI Google, and I think that can add thirty, forty dollars per share to the story. So my whole, you know, sort of walking investors through it today, you don't sell on news like this. You kind of use those opportunities for, for the winners in this AI revolution. And I think Google is front and center. It's been a good policy over the last eight months to buy NVIDIA after it drops about 10%. And they've done that a number of times during that period. Now it's down, uh, by my accounting, 19% if you take it from an intraday high of 140 down to today closed at uh, 114. Uh, and, and also, you know, NVIDIA is not like the hyperscalers. It's making money on on its business right now. Well, I mean, the, the godfather of AI is Jim and NVIDIA because they're really the only game in town. We think demand is essentially almost sold out to 2025. So that's one where, yeah, we're going to see these sell-offs, and they feel nasty. Uh. But the reality is that we think tech stocks are up another 15, 20% as we go into the rest of the year. Mm. So our whole, our whole playbook has been you own the winners in these sell-offs. And that's why the bears, they come out of hibernation mood in days like today, even though they've missed the tech rally. That, 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 that's the result. The, 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 the highlight, the, 
the level of concentration risk, though, that there is in this market, there is, are so few names that we're describing here that are a part of this theme. And I think that history would say that could, at some point, present a real problem. We're talking about a 3.5% pullback in the NASDAQ today. Okay, big deal. But longer term, if there is the slightest hint of disappointment beyond what we heard yesterday from Alphabet, could there be further erosion here? I mean, to me, when you look at what's happening in the past, I think it's about the second, third, fourth derivative. You look at IBM, you look at Dell, you look at Google, you look at Apple, you look at SPI, and you look at Apple. If you say that revolution, you need to be in the end part. Like, we're the four A's. I'm not going to say we're going to have absolute and scares. But the reality is that all that capex spending, that's bullish for tax. Dan, we had a guest on the program not too long ago who said the, the absolute number one company here to play AI with is Apple. That Apple has shown over the course of its history that it, it's the smartest company out there how to make things friendly to consumers. They turn the smartphone from something that Nokia and Ericsson did into you know, something that everybody had to have. Do you see it that way? And are there other companies like Apple that can do that, like perhaps Samsung? Yeah, look, I think I agree uh, 100% that Apple is the core AI, especially when you look at Apple intelligence, what's happened with iPhone 16. You know, we think that's how you get to a $4 trillion valuation in Apple. We've been on parallel to solve these. The reality is that consumers, when they go through AI, they're going to go through the Cupertino and essentially an Apple device. That's what 25% of the world can access AI. You talk about other needs to do that this year. I think there's names like an Oracle service now. I look at names like Palantir, that's really a pure play name in terms of use cases. So there's a lot of I mean, you talk about narrow, it is narrow now. But over the next one, two years, it's going to be locked up. So it's not going to be able to go to four in the morning. Do you need to talk about regulatory risk? Is there at some point a move on the part of government officials to get involved in how artificial intelligence is regulated? Is that a concern that you have? I mean, that's... 4.35 a.m. when you're a diner after, when you're the diner after the party. So the point is, again, regulatory will be there, but for now it's not. I mean, self-regulation, you spend a lot of time in the ballet. Regulatory is going 30 miles an hour in a minivan in the right lane. It's going 100 miles an hour in the left lane. So I don't think regulatory is going to be an issue. And I think regardless with presidential Candy wins. I also think you're going to see less regulatory. I mean, we're talking about things for the big tech. Well, let's get a broader question uh, answered here from you, Dan. Uh, do we need to worry about a slowdown in the economy and kind of spoiling the party, or no? I mean, I think right now, unless you have a, a telescope or a binocular, you don't see a recession, right? So I think. We're, we're in this Goldilocks soft landing. I'm not saying it's, it's rose and champagne, it's clearly choppiness, but if you look at overall tech earnings, it's bullish. Look at overall banks, broader, I mean, 85% are hit or being earnings. So I, I think that will be in the background, but it's not going to stop to say I have great trees. And especially what I do is kind of a Goldilocks backdrop, and the Fed, they're going to be cut. They're not hiking. So I, I, I was laughing at the time, but I just want to know, was it a, a Lamborghini in the fast lane or a Ferrari? What was it? I'd say Bugatti. <laughs> a Bugatti. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, I can picture you in that with your flashy colors, too. You wear flashy colors right at the moment? I, I, I am wearing flashy colors at the moment. Even in the you think about that Bugatti. Uh, managing director, senior equity analyst. Some scattered clouds around for tonight in the Bay Area with warm temperatures by morning in the 50s and 60s. Coming up into Thursday, it's going to be a sunny day. Starting back in the Bay, 90 to 95.
95 inland with night clear skies continue, mostly sunny for Friday and Saturday, 60s and 70s for the bay cooler, 75 to 85 well inland. This is Gary Best here with your three-day weather forecast on Bloomberg 960. Bloomberg Radio brings you influential voices on the stories that matter. Ed Chair Jerome Powell. The U.S. economy has performed really remarkably well over the last couple of years. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. We do not wish to disengage from China economically. Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan. It would be good for America if we ended up in a more normal rate structure and a growing economy. The names that matter on the news.